Hey guys, it's your favorite medical channel, Medicosis Perfectionalis, which sounds exactly like Pneumatosis Intestinalis. This is my third video about rheumatoid arthritis. Please watch the previous two to make sure you understand this. Rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory arthritis, chronic. You have autoantibodies such as the rheumatoid factor, which is an antibody against an antibody. IgM against the FC portion of IgG. ESR is high, CRP is high, ferritin is high, platelet count is high. Baker cyst, anemia of chronic disease, rheumatoid nodules, involvement of the MCP and PIP and the rest. You have carpal tunnel syndrome, you have carditis, especially pericarditis, you have basal pulmonary fibrosis and you have rheumatoid nodules in the lung. You have subluxation of the cervical spine called atlantoaxial subluxation, scleritis and episcleritis, you might perforate your sclera. The typical patient is a 40 to 50 year old female and her name is Rose and she has rheumatoid arthritis. With that being said, now let's get started. I have the Perfectionalis Ultimate Notebook. I have less than 20 of them available, plus 20 lymphoma cases, plus 25 bleeding cases with answers, of course, available at patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Hurry up, limited availability, guys. Pathophysiology of rheumatoid arthritis. This is not going to be easy. You need to clear your mind of the mental debris that you have, and I have, of course. Chronic inflammation. Causes of chronic inflammation. Infection, autoimmune, inflammatory action to sterile agents such as silica or otherwise. What kind of these are involved in rheumatoid arthritis? It's an autoimmune cause of chronic inflammation. Morphology. Since it's a chronic inflammation, you have monocytes, macrophages, lymphocytes, eosinophils, and plasma cells. If you say neutrophil, I'll come to your house and I'm gonna be mad, okay? Metaphorically speaking, because neutrophils are acute inflammation. We're talking about chronic inflammation, baby. Therefore, you have lymphocytes, macrophages, xenophils, plasma cells, but not neutrophils. We have the TGF beta and it's chemotactic. Chemo taxi. You know the taxi? Yeah, because it recruits other stuff. And chemo because the message is chemical. It's not like a taxi which comes to pick you up. The message that the taxi sends is chemical. Medicine is fun with medicosis. Let me ask you a question. What is the cause of ulnar deviation in cases of rheumatoid arthritis? It's the erosion and the subluxation, mainly the subluxation. Do you know that of these cells that are involved in chronic inflammation, we have the nasty fibroblasts. So let's add fibroblasts. Fibroblasts are going to cause what? They're going to cause fibrosis. And fibrosis is going to lead to what? Sclerosis and subluxation. Fibrosis is a big deal. Once upon a time, a salesman came to my dad's clinic, my dad is a pathologist, and said to him, I have a new drug for your patient that can reverse fibrosis. My dad has a PhD in pathology and he knows like with absolute certainty that fibrosis is an irreversible process. So he kicked the salesman in the butt and asked him to go multiply by himself and go count the staircase steps while going from this clinic, it's just Egyptian hospitality at its best. I'm exaggerating, of course, slightly. I have a drug that cures fibrosis. Morally, this is a lie. Legally, this is fraud. So the salesman learned his lesson. True story, by the way. But, medicosis, I think you're wrong. Haven't you heard of the anti-fibrogenic medications? Yes, honey, I did. Anti-fibrogenic therapy, such as tetradrine, prevent fibrosis from happening because prevention is better than cure when there is no cure. These drugs do not reverse the fibrosis, they just prevent the fibrosis. Big difference. That's why scars leave a mark so that you can learn from them. I'm so profound today, I don't know what's wrong with me. But medicosis, what about the fibrinolytic therapy that you have discussed in one of your previous videos about bleeding and coagulation disorders? Okay, honey. There is a difference between some physiologic fresh fibrin fibers that formed seven days ago that you can dissolve and simply wash away and the pathological fibrosis occurring over months or years. It's simply too late. It's irreversible. Pathophysiology of rheumatoid arthritis. It's an autoimmune disease. We have two types of autoimmune. We have the innate or natural immunity and we have the acquired or the adaptive immunity. Innate immunity is the same thing as natural immunity. 
it's unspecialized and it sucks. Acquired immunity on the other hand, which is the same as adaptive immunity, is awesome because it's specialized. I don't get it. Look, when I first left Egypt and I came to the United States, I had a very big question that needed an answer. And that was, why is America more prosperous than Egypt? Although Egypt has a better soil, better weather, no tornadoes, no, no storm, and thousands of rich natural resources. Then I heard about a Scottish guy who lived in the 18th century named Adam Smith, who wrote a book called The Wealth of Nations. Smith argues that prosperous countries are more specialized. And since I don't just take the stuff for granted because everything that's online is true, said Abraham Lincoln, I decided to verify and started by the field that I knew the most, medicine. In America, there are specialists such as pediatric ocular oncologist and pediatric transplant hepatologist. What the what? In Egypt, I've only heard about the pediatrician and the oncologist, and that's about it. And there aren't that many oncologists in the whole freaking country of Egypt. So, specialization is a good thing. You can't mess with the Smith, Adam Smith. And that's why the acquired immunity is superior to the innate immunity. Acquired immunity is specialized. An antibody searching for an antigen, like a key searching for its lock. Hashtag encryption. First, let me talk about the innate or natural immunity. There are no specialization. They are non-specialized street fighters that keep beating the living crap out of everyone without specialization. They don't have an army, a navy, or an air force. No specialization. It's a non-adaptive immunity responding to microbial and non-microbial antigens. Example, the cilia in your trachea. They don't care. They just keep sending microbes and non-microbes alike to the outside trying to get rid of them. It's good, but it's not that specialized. Your white blood cells try to kill bacteria by introducing an inflammatory response. The bacterial toxin bind to the TLRs, toll-like receptors. They activate caspases and producing something weird and interesting called the interleukin, which is a very profound name. What does IN mean? It means protein. What does LUC mean? Leukocytes or the white blood cells. What does ENTER mean? Like between. So actually, interleukin is the internet of the leukocytes. Oh, so we use internet for communication called YouTube, for example. White blood cells use internet for communication called interleukin. These interleukins are the internet. They stimulate the inflammation. The problem in rheumatoid arthritis, however, is that there is no bacteria to attack. The body is literally attacking itself, which is weird. That's why it's a disease, because pathology is defined as the scientific study of weird. Can you give us some examples of interleukins? Of course, you have interleukin 1 alpha, you have interleukin 1 beta, you have interleukin 6, you have interleukin 10, you have interleukin 18, and many others. These are examples of some interleukins involved in rheumatoid arthritis. What's the mechanism of action of glucocorticoids, the steroids baby? You have many mechanisms of action. One, glucocorticoids inhibit the phospholipase A2. Watch my video on the arachidonic acid pathway in my series about bleeding and coagulation disorders. When you block this phospholipase A2, you have no arachidonic acid. When you have no arachidonic acid, you have no prostaglandin. When you have no prostaglandin, you have no inflammation. That's why steroids are anti-inflammatory. Big time. They are the strongest anti-inflammatories known to man. Two. Glucocorticoids suppress the immunity, aka immunosuppressin, by inhibiting genes that code for the cytokines, such as those interleukin, interleukin-1, interleukin-2, especially interleukin-1-beta. So, do you think steroids will help patients with rheumatoid? You bet! I'm not saying that steroids are the best treatment for rheumatoid, but they are a treatment nonetheless because they are anti-inflammatory and they are anti-interleukin. This is education as it should be, which came from a Latin word called educu, to induce from within. I'm guiding you to figure out the answer yourself instead of spitting facts in your face like your clueless pharmacology professor with his interesting theories. Second, let's talk about the acquired or the adaptive immunity. We have two types. We have the B lymphocytes called 
hemoral immunity not humoral it's not funny it's hemoral meaning fluid and if you remember the ancient greek cultures and philosophers they have the famous four humors four fluids which were was like blood phlegm black bile and yellow bile if i remember correctly so humor means fluid hemoral means fluid why because the b lymphocytes are gonna secrete antibodies into the fluids of your body not only blood but also saliva mucous membrane etc 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 and next we have the famous t lymphocytes cell mediated immunity immunity mediated by these cells and these cells will destroy other cells it's powerful okay your great helper t cells will come to your help by recognizing the antigen stimulating your regulatory or suppressor t cells and by stimulating b cells so the t helper stimulates the t and the b awesome it's called helper what do b lymphocytes do they produce antibodies which is awesome if there's bacteria but if it's ho it's horrible when there is no bacteria because the body is literally attacking itself which is weird that's why rheumatoid is a disease we call these antibodies o2 antibodies because o2 means self that's why in cars you have manual transmission which you have to shift it manually and automatic transmission which shifts itself by itself because O2 means self. Got it? There are many types of T helper, TH1, TH2, TH17, and these CD4 positive TH17 are involved in rheumatoid arthritis big time. What is the mechanism of action of rituximab? Rituximab is a monoclonal antibodies against CD20 positive cells. B lymphocytes are CD20 positive. Rituximab will beat the crap out of them. When you have no B lymphocytes, you have no O2 antibodies. Brilliant. Why does rituximab treat follicular lymphoma? Because follicular lymphoma is a B cell lymphoma. Boom. Why does rituximab treat rheumatoid arthritis? Because rheumatoid arthritis is an O2 immune disease. And did you know it secretes O2 antibodies? Who secretes these O2 antibodies? The B cells. Boom, touchdown, that's how we do it. If your pharmacology professor explained it to you this way, I will resign from YouTube and work for a garbage company because garbage men take away your garbage so you don't get sick. It's called healthcare. Thank God I get to keep my job. How do glucocorticoids work? They suppress hemoral immunity. How? By inhibiting the ability of B lymphocytes to produce O2 antibodies. So, do you think steroids will help patients with rheumatoid? Yes, they suppress the cell-mediated immunity as well by inhibiting the T-cell proliferation. Pathophysiology of rheumatoid. You remember the hypersensitivity reactions? What kind of hypersensitivity reaction is rheumatoid arthritis? Type 4 and also type 3. Remember, rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic, chronic disease. It takes time. So don't say it's immediate. It's not immediate. And it's not type 2 either. It's delayed. It takes time for those T-cells to attack. You can consider rheumatoid type 3 as well? Yeah, because type 3 we have immune complexes. And if you remember, we have immune complex induced vasculitis in lupus and in rheumatoid. And I've talked about this before. So rheumatoid arthritis type 3 and type 4 hypersensitivity reactions. If you have to choose one, choose type 4. And here's the type 3 hypersensitivity. Rheumatoid factory have an antibody against an antibody. All right, leading to immune complexes. They deposit, activate the complement, the classical pathway. C5A, chemotaxis, inflammation. We have arthritis, nephritis, vasculitis. Those are called immunocomplexes. This is especially true for lupus. It's also true for rheumatoid arthritis. Although nephritis is not common in rheumatoid, it's common in lupus, baby. So that was the rheumatoid factor. How about the anti-CCP? Antibodies against citrullinated proteins. To know more about citrullinated proteins, watch my video on anti-CCP. Rheumatoid factor is more sensitive. Anti-CCP is more specific. When you have both together, bad news, worse prognosis, more aggressive symptoms of rheumatoid, extra articular manifestations, etc., etc. In a previous video, I've told you about the human leukocytic antigens in rheumatoid arthritis. It's HLA-DR4. Pathophysiology. Please don't ever forget that the hallmark of rheumatoid arthritis is synovitis, inflammation of synovial membrane. Therefore, rheumatoid arthritis will affect synovial joints, not the fibrocartilaginous joints. 
and not the fibrous joints. Okay, we have synovitis, inflammation of synovial membrane, then panus formation. What the flip is a panus? Granulation tissue, rich in inflammatory cells and fibroblasts. Fibroblast, fibrosis, contract, ankylosis. So fibroblast, fibrosis, the fibrosis contracts, ankylosis. Not the fibrosis contracts, the fibroblasts and the fibrosis contract leading to ankylosis, which is joint fusion, which is horrible. Also, you have erosions because of this inflammation, ulnar deviation and subluxation. Do you know what's the cause of ulnar deviation? It's the subluxation, baby. Okay, we have the panus. What else? Proliferates. This panus is inflamed granulation tissue. It's crazy. Producing cytokines. Cytokines, more destruction of the articular cartilage. Ooh. In examples of those cytokines. TNF-alpha, interleukin-1. Therefore, TNF-alpha inhibitors will treat rheumatoid arthritis. Therefore, steroids will treat rheumatoid arthritis because they inhibit interleukin-1, especially interleukin-1 beta. Interleukin-1 receptor antagonists such as the famous anakinra will treat rheumatoid arthritis because they inhibit interleukin-1. Boom! In rheumatoid arthritis, both of the B cells and the T cells are crazy. The B cells produce O2 antibodies, the CD4 helper T cells, especially TH17, produce cytokines leading to inflammation. Both of them are involved and it's horrible. Cytokines involved in rheumatoid arthritis. Th1 cell produce interferon gamma. Activates macrophage synovial cells. Macrophage produce interleukin-1 and TNF-alpha. Stimulate the synovial cells. Proteases. Proteases. Destroys protein. Destroy protein in the collagen tube and the proteoglycan. The cartilage is now history. Hashtag destroyed. What else? Th17. Interleukin-17. Activates neutrophils and monocytes. T cells, the rank ligand. I have a video about the rank and the rank ligand in my hematology playlist. It's awesome. Expressed on the surface of T cells, they activate osteoclast. And osteoclast, they cut down bone called bone resorption. The bone is destroyed. So the cartilage is destroyed and the bone is destroyed. If you remember osteoarthritis, it was different because in osteoarthritis, the cartilage is destroyed, but the bone is growing, called osteophytes and eburnation and every bone and all of this crazy stuff. So, osteoarthritis, destruction of cartilage, growth of bones, rheumatoid arthritis, baby, destruction of cartilage, destruction of bone, big time. And here is the best slide ever about rheumatoid. Here is the normal joint. You have bone and bone. Cartilage and cartilage, joint space in between, joint capsules on both sides. Then we start having bone erosions. Why? Because of the stupid panus, which is inflammation, inflammatory granulation tissue eroding into the bones, eroding into the cartilage, eroding into everything. We have panus, loss of cartilage and joint space narrowing because the panus is taking the place of the normal joint space. Then we have more inflammation, more inflammation, more inflammation until we end up with fibrosis, the fibroblast contract leading to ankylosis, which is fusion. Those two bones are fused together. There is no longer any joint. So there is loss of joint space. There is loss of cartilage. There is osteopenia, which is loss of bone and osteoporosis, loss of bone. Because rheumatoid arthritis is loss of cartilage and loss of bones. If you remember osteoarthritis, what was the buzzword? Osteophytes. In rheumatoid arthritis, we have two buzzwords, panus and ankylosis. And you can add osteopenia. So osteoarthritis has bone growth, rheumatoid arthritis has bone destruction. Let me quickly review rheumatoid arthritis in just one minute. Rheumatoid arthritis is inflammatory, ESR is high, CRP is high. We have Baker cyst here, we have hepcidin and anemia of chronic disease, also known as anemia of inflammation. We have the rheumatoid nodules on extensor surface, we have involvement of the PIP and the MCP and the rest. Median nerve entrapment, carpal tunnel syndrome, we have pericarditis, we have basal fibrosis and rheumatoid nodules in the lung. We have episcleritis and scleritis, we have atlantoaxial subluxation. The typical presentation is in a 40 to 50 year old female. Got it? Got it. Anti antibodies, anti-CCP and rheumatoid factor, which is an IgGM against the FC portion of IgG, TNF alpha big time, interleukin 1, especially interleukin 1 beta. Chronic synovitis, the buzzword is panus formation, ankylosis, osteopenia. What's the panus? It's inflamed granulation tissue containing inflammatory cells and fibroblasts. That was 50 seconds, less than one minute. Good. Nature versus nurture, the old philosophical argument. Is the fault in us or is the fault in the stars? John Green argues the fault 
in our stars great book by the way and it's also a major motion picture genetic disease all right and environmental factors genetics such as what hla dr4 failure of tolerance the body is no longer tolerating itself hashtag autoimmune unregulated lymphocyte activation these guys are crazy b cells are secreting autoantibodies t cells are secreting fibroblasts synovial cells chondrocyte etc how about the environmental factor smoking be specific cigarette smoking not cigar not e-cigarettes not hoka not pipe not ever uh, cigarette be specific and infection big time enzymatic modification called citrullination all right again stimulating b cells and t cells we have fibroblasts, synovial cells, chondrocytes, proliferate, forming pandas, which is granulation tissue, leading to erosion, fibrosis, ankylosis. And these enzymes include protease, collagenase, elastase, the cartilage is destroyed, the bone is destroyed. Welcome to rheumatoid land. If you want to know more about rheumatoid arthritis, I have a PDF on my Patreon for just a buck. Or also for the same buck, you get a PDF about osteoarthritis and another PDF about aspirin. All right, it's up to you. And we discuss the likelihood ratio in this pdf thank you thank you guys for watching please subscribe and join the tribe hit the bell to get notified on facebook i have more than 100 vignettes or cases follow me on all of these platforms you can support this channel patreon.com forward slash metacosis i'll give you the pdfs including the pdf of this video and every other video that i've ever produced on youtube if the video is on youtube the pdf is on patreon thank you guys for watching as always be safe stay happy and study hard this is metacosis perfect channels where medicine makes perfect sense